Well, hope everybody had a great weekend, and once again, thank you very much for joining us here this afternoon. Myron, how are you? Good. All right, sounds good. Glad to hear that. All right, well, for those of you that uh, were with us last week, we um, kind of started over in a cycle that we do every once in a while, going back and covering some of the basics, and last week we talked about Nadex Binary Basics. And uh, this week, we're going to talk about the basics of Nadex spread. So if you're very, very new to Nadex and just really diving into the two products that Nadex offers, uh, binaries and spreads, last week we covered the basics of binaries. Tonight, we're going to talk about the basics of spreads. We're not going to really dive in really deep to, you know, strategies and systems and advanced, crazy, over-your-head ways to use um, the Nadex spreads. We're actually going to kind of start fresh, kind of hold your hand, treat you like you're a five-year-old, and walk you through the basics. If you've never heard of a Nadex spread, you've never watched a webinar or done any reading on a Nadex spread, what are they, how do they work, that's what we're going to cover for you tonight. So for those of you veteran traders that have been with us before and been trading Nadex spreads for a while, some of this may be a little elementary to you. But uh, keep in mind, it's always a good idea to go back and cover the basics, make sure you have them down, and always to remember that we were all there at one point. We were all newbies to Nadex spreads, and so that's what we're going to cover tonight. So let's knock out our disclosures here so we can get rolling. Trading futures options or any financial instrument involves risk, may not be suitable for every investor. The information here in this webinar is for educational and informational purposes only and is not an offer or a solicitation of an offer to buy or sell any particular product offered by Nadex. Past performance is not indicative of future results. So once again, those of you that are kind of brand new to the world of Nadex, you can hop on over to Nadex.com and you can go through these top tabs at the top here and get some information about who is Nadex, what is Nadex, what do they offer. Like I said, Nadex basically offers two different products. They offer binary options and they offer spreads. Last week, we reviewed the kind of basics of binaries. Tonight, we're going to talk about spreads. So you can also go through this tab here and get some information on spreads. You can check out the uh, video archives on the Nadex site, on the Nadex YouTube channel for many, many other webinars that we've done uh, about Nadex spreads, anywhere from the basic spreads, picking the right spreads, misconceptions of spreads, into some advanced trading strategies and systems with spreads as well. Speaking of trading strategies and systems, another thing I want to bring your attention to is right here under the Trading Platforms tab. Uh, you can visit the Nadex uh, trading platform online. They also have a mobile app, which is very, very cool. And you can go right here to Demo Trading Platform. And if you don't have a demo account with Nadex just yet, I want to encourage you to get one. In fact, sign up for one right now while we're on this webinar. All you have to do is select a username, fill out some quick information here. Okay. Even if you don't have a funded live account with Nadex, you can still get a demo account, which is pretty cool. There's a lot of places that won't give you a demo account unless you already have a live funded account. But Nadex will give you a free $25,000 demo account. All right. So fill this out. Hit open a demo account. In just a few moments, you'll get an email with a temporary password, and you can log right into the Nadex demo platform. And you can go right here to the My Account tab and click Settings. And then go right here to Password. You can change the password to whatever you want. That way you can easily log in with your selected username and password. Get familiar with using the Nadex platform. Get familiar with the different products and instruments that they offer, entering and exiting orders. And it's a great place to test out any new strategies or systems. Okay, That way you can test them out. Not with your live money at first, test them out with your demo account, master them in your demo account, then move over to live and start trading. All right, just a great place to kind of get grounded there. All right, so make sure that you take advantage of that. It's an amazing free uh, tool, free educational tool that Nadex offers there for you. All right, my name is John Skelton. I'm not with Nadex. I'm with a company called Apex Investing. Two, Apex and Nadex, two complete separate different companies. Nadex is an exchange. Apex, we're an online 
company of traders helping traders. We're a community of traders. We're an education-based company. We've got over 20,000 members. You know, we have uh, strategies and systems and software and indicators. We focus a lot on risk management and probability. That's why we love the Nadex products because all of your uh, risk is capped and all of your risk is known up front before you ever enter the trade. And we're, we're traders just like you. We, uh, we trade Nadex all the time. We're a Nadex education partner. We do these webinars for Nadex each and every Monday, these application and strategy uh, webinar series. Just to offer you some free information about what is Nadex, how do the Nadex products work, different ways to trade them, and how to take advantage of these capturist products. So I've been with Nadex or with Apex now for about three years as head of operations. I've got a background in banking and as a stockbroker. And I'm an educator. I do a lot of education, a lot of training systems, training webinars, step-by-step -step training courses. And I'm a trader just like you. Like I said, we trade Nadex binaries and spreads pretty much each and every day on our own and in our trade rooms over at Apex. And we love the Nadex products and we're just here to kind of share those with you. So tonight, kind of starting from scratch, if you're brand new, what is a Nadex spread? Why trade Nadex spreads? What is the value of trading them? What are the benefits of trading them? I'm gonna talk to you about how to trade with reduced risk. That's something that we're all looking for is something that we can trade with low risk but still have a high profit potential and how to how to be able to trade in any market condition around the clock using Nadex spreads all right Nadex offers spreads on you know pretty much all of their instrument with all the instruments on Nadex there's always something to trade there's always markets open there's always multiple spreads to choose from different options, even in the middle of the night, all right? Maybe you're a part-time trader, maybe you're a full-time trader, maybe you can only trade in the evening or overnight, like the European session. There's always tons of options there for you, okay? So, let's talk about Nadex spreads and let's talk about some basics of trading. Some things you need to know to make money in trading. You need to learn these things. First of all, how to reduce risk. That is one of the biggest downfalls with any trader, but especially with new traders or traders with smaller accounts, is risking too much. And I think as newbies, we've all been there. Uh, some people can say, oh yeah, I've blown more than one account, risking too much, not understanding how to get great leverage. So how can you increase your leverage, but at the same time, have reduced risk? Myron says, yep, that's me. We, we've all been there, right? and how to give yourself more time to be right. What do I mean by more time to be right? Well, how many times have you, you're sitting in front of your computer, you're trading, you've got your charts open in front of you, you've got your indicators on it, you've got this great little strategy or system that you use to trade, and you're saying, all right, my charts, my indicators, my strategy or system telling me the market's going up. So you hop in and you buy, right? And then what happens? Boom, it feels like as soon as you enter, what does the market do? Boom, it goes down and it knocks you out, right? And then what happens a few minutes later? Oh, then the market starts to go up just the way I thought it was going. But it seems like I get in, it goes down and kicks me out, then it goes my direction. I just needed a little more time to be right and some protection there. Raise a hand, anybody ever had that happen? We all know that's happened. It's happened to all of us, right? We were right in the direction, but it went the other way first and knocked us out. And how can we get around that? How can we have some other options that may not hit us as hard there? Okay, because we've all been there and all done that. All right, and that's what I want to talk to you a little bit about tonight with Nadex spreads, okay? So sometimes I call them a box spreads because if you draw them on a chart, they kind of look like a box, all right? And I'm gonna show you some examples here because Nadex spreads, okay? It, first of all, if you're familiar with Nadex binaries and how Nadex binaries work, we covered that last week as far as the basics of Nadex binaries, how they work. And I love, I love Nadex binaries, trade them all the time. But what I need you to do right now is if you're familiar with binaries, if you're familiar with Nadex binaries, even if you currently trade Nadex binaries and you think you know Nadex, I need to take, I need you to take everything you know in your head 
about Nadex binaries and just lock it away in another room right now. Okay, because one of the big misconceptions is that spreads work the same way as binaries. Okay, and they don't. They're a completely different animal, completely different product here. So that's the very first thing you need to know, especially if you're kind of new to spreads. As we go into these basics, do not think like a binary trader. Spreads are a Nadex product, but they are not like Nadex binaries. They're completely different. So I want to set that groundwork there. Everything you know about spreads, lock it away in another room for a little while here, for this hour. And open up your mind to this being something completely brand new and different than Nadex binaries. Otherwise, you're going to confuse yourself. Okay? When I talk about top and bottoms, when I talk about floors and ceilings of a spread, it's not like a floor and ceiling of a binary. When you think about Nadex binaries have a floor and ceiling, what do you think? You think of yes or no, zero or one, being at expiration being worth either zero or 100, right? You think of two different outcomes for a binary. It's either all or nothing at expiration, zero or one. And you think about the floor being zero and the ceiling being 100 or vice versa, right? Take all that out. That's not how spreads work, okay? So let's start clean slate here. Let's check out Nadex spreads. First of all, I want to talk to you about a leverage, all right? Some of this might be a little over your head. Some of this might make sense. Don't worry about it. Just trying to make a point here. This is not something you have to fully wrap your head around if you don't understand some of this. But when you use mar with Nadex, there is no margin. Okay. But let's say you're trading, you know, stocks or futures or, or spot forex. When you use margin on securities, you're borrowing money from your broker. Therefore, you're paying interest to the broker on the margin or borrowed funds. Let's say, for example, you have ten thousand dollars in your account. You put up $5,000 in margin, you're borrowing $5,000, okay? With cash, there's no leverage, and your risk is equal to what you put up. For example, if it costs you $100 to get into a trade, your risk is $100, all right? And that's how it works with Nadex spreads, is whatever amount you put up to enter the trade, that is your risk. That is known up front and is capped up front, okay? Um, with other, certain brokers, you have Reg T margin, normally like a two-time leverage. You got 50% leverage. Most people don't even know they have that, like on their stock or ETFs accounts. But for example, if something would cost $100 to get into, you only have to put up 50, but your risk is still 100. All right. With futures, you've got all kind of different margin requirements. You've got initial margin, which is the amount of money you have to enter a trade if you're not using day trading margin. You've got maintenance which is the amount you set aside while the trade is open if you're not using day trading margin, or let's say you're holding you know, overnight. You've got day trading margin, which is normally a reduced amount of capital, like 10 to 25% of the initial margin on trades that are open after the new session starts. I mean, you can trade futures and you might have something that's just a couple hundred dollars margin up to $2,000 margin that you have to have just to get into one contract, okay? So there's all kind of different margins and different requirements. And what does all that mean? It means the amount of money you have to put up to get into a trade, all right? And how much of the market are you controlling when you put that money up and enter that trade? It's called leverage. Leverage varies by broker or by country. It can be one to one, it could be four or 500 to one, okay? And all types are uncapped risk. In the US, it's usually 50 to one, like, with Forex, for example, if you're going to trade 10,000, <clears> excuse me, 10,000 units U.S. dollar, it would only cost you, you know, a couple hundred bucks in margin. But you still have the full $10,000 risk if you're buying the Forex pair and even more potentially if you're selling it. Now, granted, the likelihood that it moves that far is very slim, but the point is you don't have capped risk. So margin and leverage vary depending on which one of the dozen strategies you're using who your broker is, and so on. Quick example here, and then we're gonna move forward. Let's just say here, this is a quick example of, say you're trading the Euro dollar, you're day trading the Euro dollar, okay? Equalized size of $125,000, or units of US dollar. Let's say that you were trading, 
like a, an ETF, okay? So you got an ETF, your leverage value, 125,000, your day trading margin is $31,000, meaning just to get into that trade, you'd have to put up $31,000, okay? And that's giving you a four to one leverage there, okay? So that's quite a bit, right? What if you're trading spot Forex, Euro dollar, all right? Same, same unit, 125,000, you'd have to put up a little over $3,000, giving you about a 50 to one leverage, okay? With quite a bit of risk potential there, right? Uh, what about futures, trading Euro dollar futures, 6E? Okay, same thing, still controlling 125,000, got to put up $500 in margin. It's giving you about a 250 to one ratio. Um, let's say you're trading a Euro dollar future option, okay, with a 1.2500 strike, for example. Um, got to put up about $2,500. This is not the amount, this is the amount you have to have in your account just to get into the trade much less still have room in your account to handle the up and down of the trade, okay? It's gonna give you about a 49 to one, all right? In this particular example, what if you were using a Euro dollar Nadex spread, all right, with, this is a daily spread with a market, with a floor and a ceiling here from 2490 to 2740, just in this particular example, you put up about 250 bucks to get into that trade, about a 500 to one, and a much lower risk. Some of you are saying, I don't get any of this. This is just a quick comparison to other instruments you can trade, showing you that with the Nadex spreads, you still have outrageously good leverage, but you have a much smaller potential risk because the amount that you put up into the trade is the, your max risk, all right? You have capped risk but still have great leverage. And the price is driven by the underlying markets, not driven by supply and demand of the spread as the market makers make in the market based on where the underlying is located. All right, and spreads move in pips. Remember I told you earlier, if you're a binary trader, you think like a binary trader, just lock that in another room for right now. Spreads are not all or nothing at expiration. It's not zero or 100 at expiration. Spreads move in pips. Pip is the last digit quoted, and every, every digit is worth a dollar per spread, every tick. Let me show you what I mean by that here. So here's some great things about the Nadex spreads. With Nadex Exchange, all the products are capped risk, meaning you can't lose more than you put up. Okay, you're not gonna get a margin call, you're not gonna have it go against you, and you know, you're not gonna risk more than you have to put up for the trade. So you know ahead of time, before ever entering the trade, the exact amount you have to put up and the exact amount you're putting at risk. So your risk is the initial cost of the trade entry, still get effective leverage, and you can trade product-based stock index futures, commodity futures, or cash spot forex so what is a spread how do how do they work remember like i told you before spreads kind of if you draw them on a chart they kind of look like a box all spreads have a top and a bottom or a ceiling and a floor okay so let's just look at an example here let's just say that this was a previous example of the euro dollar Let's say the floor of this spread was at 1.2400. So the bottom or the floor of the spread was from 1.2400. The ceiling or the top of the spread was at 1.2500. So the spread is the difference between the floor and the ceiling. For example, this means this is a 100 pip wide spread, okay? From 2500, 2400, 100 pip spread and it moves in pips or ticks, which is the last qu digit quoted, all right? Each pip is worth one dollar, all right? And there are potentially a hundred pips 
in this spread here, just depending on where the market is at the time you enter, okay? So, we've got a top and a bottom. So, let's look at an example here of if we were selling a spread. So, why are we going to sell? Well, our charts, our indicators, our strategy, our system, whatever we're using is telling us we think the market's going down, we want to go short, we want to sell, right? So, if I'm selling, I'm saying that the market's going down, right? If I'm wrong and the market goes up, I can't lose additional money above the ceiling. Does that make sense? So, let's say that I buy into the spread or sell the spread right here, okay? So, this, the ceiling is at 2500 Let's say I sell it like down here at 2490 I think the market's going down. That's why I'm selling. But I'm wrong and the market shoots way up. I'm not going to lose money past the ceiling. My risk is capped right there. My losses are capped right there. Okay? Now, if I'm right and I sell it thinking the market's going down and the market does go down, I'm not going to make additional money below the floor. Okay? So the ceiling caps my risk and the floor caps my reward all right so i know going into it my max both ways okay so marion says if the spread is 100 pips wide does that mean it costs 100 to get in no it does not marion let me show you why here perfect example so remember i told you marion that with nadex your risk is the amount that you put up to get in the trade, right? And you can't lose any more than that, okay? So, let's say in this example right here, we think the market's going down, so we want to sell. Let's say, for example, that we sell at 24.90, okay? Where is our risk capped at? If it goes against us and we're wrong, it does, the market doesn't go down, it goes up, what's the most I can lose? Well, each pip is worth a dollar. There are 10 pips, right, from the ceiling of 2,500 down to where I sell at 2,490 is only 10 pips. So my maximum risk is 10 pips. So the amount that I have to put up to get in the trade, I have to put up my max risk, which is what? ten dollars okay so no Marion so Marion asked a great question though if the spread is 100 pips wide do I have to put up 100 no all you have to put up is your max risk so if I'm selling at 2490 the difference of the ceiling compared to where I sell is the most I can lose so that's all I have to put up let's say that I didn't sell it till it got down here at 2480 and I sold at 2480 well, the difference of 2480 compared to the ceiling, which is the most I can lose, is what? 20 bucks. So then I'd have to put up 20. Does that make sense? Let's say I waited and I didn't sell till way down here at 2430. Well, what's my max risk? Well, my max risk is from 2430 up to 2500, which is 70. So at that point, I'd have to put up 70. Okay, does that make sense? So that makes sense how the risk is determined and therefore how much you have to put up is determined, okay? So it's not a complicated thing to, to figure out necessarily because um, you know wherever you sell compared to the top is what you gotta put up. And you also know that what? Wherever you sell compared to the bottom is your max potential reward. Does that make sense? Now you see why I said like if you draw it on a chart, it would look like a box because you know in that box is everything you need, right? And if you know it's a 100 pip wide spread, now there's others, some are you know 200 pips or 250 pips, but you know before you get in because you select which one you want. And so it's easy to determine, it's pretty simple to determine what you're putting up and what your reward is. Not that you have to figure that out because if you hop over here to the Nadex platform, 
let's just say, for example, we go to, uh, we're coming into later in the day here, but let's just say we pull up the Dow. We want to trade the Dow, right? Well, I clicked binaries. Um, oh, actually our, our spreads are closed right now. I'm sorry, the platform's closed right now. But all you have to do is pull up a ticket, and before you ever enter, it's going to show you the exact amount you have to put up and your, your max risk and your max reward. So let's go back to our example here. Um, Myron says, so I want to sell as close to the roof as possible. Well, there's always different options for spreads. All right, You've got, you're going to have some that are close to the ceiling, close to the floor, and some right in the middle. They all uh, you know, work a little bit differently depending on the strategy or system that you want, that you're using. Okay. So I'm not going to tell you, oh, yes, always do that, you know, because sometimes there's a little bit of premium there. You know, you might be paying a few dollars of premium. That's kind of more in a little bit of an advanced um, uh, webinar series. Um, it all depends on your strategy, your system. You know, there's some strategies or systems you use different spreads for different reasons, okay? But as far as your max risk and as far as the amount you have to put up, going close to the floor or ceiling will always be the one you have to put the, the least up to get into. It may not move as quickly for you as some other ones, but that's kind of more advanced. But yes, it, as far as keeping your initial amount you have to put up low, that's going to be the lowest one. may not always be the best one for your strategy or system. Okay? You can watch some of our other videos on that. But back to our example here. So if I sell at 2490, we know that our max risk is right here at 2,500. Each pip is worth one dollar. So there's ten pips. So the max risk and the max and the cost I have to put up is ten bucks. Okay. Now, so there's down from 2,490 all the way down to 2,400 is the most that I can make. So there's 90 pips of profit potential. Okay. Each pip is worth one dollar. So a potential profit is $90, okay? So again, whatever you know about binaries, lock it away in another room for a minute. So you may ask me, okay, so if I sell right here at 2490, I'm only risking 10 bucks. So if the market stays within these lines, then I make 100, no, trading a spread is just like mimicking the market itself, kind of dollar for dollar, tick for tick. If I sell right here at 2490 and the market goes down and expires at 2450, what's the difference from 2490 to 2450? How many pips is that? 40 pips. And each pip is worth $1. So I made $40. Does that make sense? It's not a binary. It's not all or nothing. It's, again, it's kind of like mimicking the market, but with a much lower amount that you have to put up to get in the trade, right? If you're a trend trader and you want to follow the big trends of the market and you think the market is going to trend up, it's going up and going to trend up 100 pips today, right? You want to follow it a dollar a tick, dollar per pip at expiration. That's how a spread works, okay? Now, here's another great thing about spreads, though. What was the example we talked about earlier? Hey, I'm going to sell right here at 2490. I think the market's going to go down. But what does it do first? Comes down and then pops up, right? Pops up. If you're trading, say, futures or spot forex or whatever, and you get in and the market pops way up against you, it might kick you out of your trade, right? You might have a stop up there like, oh, I don't want to lose more than that. Well, here's what's great about the Nadex spreads. If I sell, say, the market's going down, yes, this, I, no, I can't lose money above the ceiling, and I don't make money below the floor. But when the market comes up and hits the ceiling, guess what? It doesn't close your trade out. You're still in this trade. It doesn't knock you out. Your trade, your spread trade does not close until 
expiration or until you close it early. So just because the market pops up against you and hits this ceiling, it does not knock you out of the trade. It doesn't close your trade. Your trade is still open. And you're glad, right? Because why? If you sold at 2490 and it goes up and hits 2500 you're down 10 bucks. It can keep going up against you another 50 ticks. Are you losing any more money as it goes way up? No, you've already hit your max risk, your max loss. But it doesn't close you out of the trade. The spread's still open until it expires. And what happens? Then it comes back down. Remember, remember I talked about more time to be right, more room to be right without taking a, a huge you know, loss against you, having a huge stops. And then what, it, what does it do? It comes on down, it comes on down, and it comes on down. And then right here, what does it do? It hits the floor, okay? So the other thing is when it comes down here and hits that floor, again, it does not automatically close out this trade. This trade stays open until expiration or until you close it early, okay? And you can close it any time you want. All right, you don't have to hold it till expiration. You can close it. Okay, so we sell at twenty four ninety. Each pip's worth a dollar. We got ninety pips of potential profit. We're not now. When it comes down here and hits this floor, it keeps going. Are we making more money every tick past this floor, or not? No. So we're capped on both sides. We know exactly what we're doing. Okay what we're looking at ahead of time. If the market is still flying down, we can close this spread out and hop into another spread that goes further down, okay? It's not limiting you. It's just, it's not limiting your, your profit potential. You can hop into another spread that's, you know, got a different floor and ceiling, but it does limit your, gives you capped risk, okay? Now, let's look at the opposite here, okay? What if we're buying the spread? Strategy, system, charts, indicators, whatever. We think the market's going up. Okay, well, it's the same thing but reversed. If we think the market's going up, we're this, we can't make additional money above the ceiling, and we can't lose additional money below the floor. If we think the market's going up but it goes down instead, we can't lose more than the floor. So another type of same example. We buy it right here at 2410, okay, thinking the market's going to go up. What does it do on us? Starts to pop up, and then what does it do? Boom, shoots down. Remember how I opened the webinar asking you, have any of you ever had that? You think the market's going up, you buy, what does it do? You get in and bam, it pops down against you. And you're like, oh man, I gotta get out. It hit my stop, I, it's, I can't lose anymore, I gotta get out. And then as soon as you get out, what happens? Flies back up in your direction. You're like, come on, right? Well, that's the beauty of a Nadex spread. We bought right here at 2490, what did it immediately do? Bam, went down on us, went against us, went below our floor. But where's our floor? In this example, we bought at 2410, the floor's 2400. We got 10 pips of risk. Dollar a pip, $10 cost and max, okay? so. It can go against us, and we're not sweating it every single tick. Our, heartbeat, our heartbeat's not going crazy every single tick. It's going against us because we're not losing anything below this floor. And our trade is still open, and we're hoping that it's going to come back. And like in this example, it does, right? And again, it comes back, and it goes up. We got in at 2410. Our profit potential is up to 2500. Got 90 pips of potential profit. Each pip worth $1, $90 of potential profit. So let me ask a question. We bought here at 2410, it went against us, and it came up here, and it hit the ceiling right here at 2500. Are we going to make any more money past this ceiling of 2500? No. So yes, if we exit early, we're gonna have a little bit of bid-ask spread, okay? 
And that's just going to depend on what you're trading, what time of day you're trading it. Is there news? You know, might be a few dollars, might be five dollars, or you know, it could be more with news, whatever. You know. So, do we have, in general, do we have any real reason to leave that trade open? If I bought it here for 2410, comes all the way up to 2500, why am I really holding on to it? Well, I don't want to pay a few dollars a bid ass spread. So I'll just hold on to it till expiration so I don't have to pay a few dollars of spread to sell it. Really? Because what happens right here? Hits max profit, kind of comes down. Oh, oh, you're getting scared. Oh, now it's coming. Cool. Oh, I'm good. Oh, wait a minute. Boom. You want to talk about whose heartbeat is going crazy right there? And now you're telling yourself, I was pretty dumb for being stingy about a few dollars of bid-ass spread and worrying about spread. I should have taken my profit and not been greedy and ran. Now, luckily, this one came back up, and then, bam, it expired right here. Okay? So I still made good money, but is there really any reason to stay in that trade if you hit max profit? or be worried about a few dollars bid ass spread or take your money and go on to the next trade, okay? So keep that in mind, just because it hits your max profit, it doesn't close you out of the trade. Just because it goes against you and hits the floor, it doesn't close you out of the trade. And there's a reason why, okay? Because it gives you the flexibility of more time to be right, more room to be right to let the market come back in your direction, okay? And yes, you can hold the spread until the expiration time listed, or you can close it at any time before, okay? If you bought it down here, you can sell out of it when the market's up here, but you're only going to get your profit to here. Or if you sold it, you can get out here wherever, okay? As long as it's still quoting, which it, it'll be quoting until what's called the, the dark zone, which is two minutes before expiration. Couple, two minutes before expiration, the market makers normally pull all their quotes there, okay? So if you want to exit early, just try to make sure you exit a couple minutes before expiration. That's it. So you can exit at any time, right? If I bought here at 2510, yes, I can make money all the way up to 2500. But if I buy here at 25, 2410, the market's moving up here and it's at 2460, and I got to run. I got to go to work. I have a full-time job or I got to go get the kids. Okay, well, I'm going to close early and take my from 2410 to 2460. How many pips is that? 50 pips. I'm going to get it out. I'm going to get out. I'm going to close out, take my 50 pips profit. Sure, I didn't make the full amount I could have made all the way up to here, but the beauty is I can close out anytime I want. I'm following the market. What if I, hey, I think the market's going up. So I buy at 2410, market gets up to 2460. I'm up 50 pips. But wait a minute. Now my chart's slowing down. Now my indicators are starting to go the other way on me. Maybe the market's made its full move. Do you stay in a trade because you could potentially make up to this level on the Nadex spread? Or do you do what your chart's telling you to do? Does the ceiling of this spread or the floor of this spread control the market? Does the Nadex spread ceiling and floor control the market? No. Market controls the market. You don't stay in something just because you potentially could, right? You stay in something, you follow your strategy, your system. Market's going up, you're following it up, you're trailing your stop up. Your strategy or system tells you when to get out. Your strategy or system tells you the market's reversing, and that's when you get out. Or when it hits your max, then you get out. Does that make sense? You don't have to hold it all the way, okay? So great leverage, capped risk, doesn't kick you out just because it hits one side or the other. You can close it out early. If the spread expires, it will close at the settlement price at the time of expiration. The settlement price is based on the underlying market. So, any questions, before we move on, any questions just on what we covered here about the 
basics of a spread and how it works. Okay, and let me check out some of our questions here. Uh, Eric says, why are some spreads so expensive to get into? Eric, I'm going to cover that here in just a second. Okay, quick, quick answer to that, Eric. This example I'm showing you here is a 100 pip spread, right? From 2,500 to 2,400. So Eric, in this example, let's say I wanted to buy at 2,450. So I think the market's going up, so I'm gonna buy, but I buy at 2,450. How much money do I have to put up? Yeah, 50 bucks, right Eric? You didn't have to check or think about it or look at a ticket. If I'm getting in at 2450, I got to put up 50 bucks. Why? Because I got I have to put up my max risk. My max risk is from right here down to right here, right? So Eric, this example I showed you, okay, was a hundred pip spread. What if I'm looking at a 300 pip spread? What if I'm looking at a 500 pip spread? Okay, so it's so let's say I'm looking at a 500 pip spread, and the market's at 400, and I want to buy, so I've got to put up from 400 down to here. So Eric asked a good question. He's like, "Why are some of these spreads so expensive to get in?" Well, because it depends on which spread you're looking at. Are you looking at a 100 pip spread, and the market's way down here close to the bottom? Or you're looking at a 500 pip spread. You know what I'm saying? So now does that make sense? Um, let's see here. Let me just check out any other quick questions here. Uh, so Dwight, you asked earlier, do you have to wait until expiration date? I think we covered that. You can uh, get rid of that anytime. Johnny asked a great question. For example, let's say you're trading spreads on the Dow or the NASDAQ, which is a stock index. Johnny says, well, I need $25,000 in my account in order to trade spreads. What Johnny's asking about there is about the securities day trading uh, rule. Correct, Johnny? And no, because these, are, these, these spreads are a derivative, okay? So no, you do not need $25,000 in your account to trade spreads. All you need in a Nadex account, you can open a Nadex account, a live Nadex account, with a minimum of $100, okay? You can open it for $100, you can put $1,000 in there, 10,000, whatever you wanna put in there. The only amount of money you need in your account, Johnny, to trade a spread is whatever your risk on that spread is. For example, and I'm not recommending a trade here, guys, I'm just giving you an example. Let's say I've got 100 bucks, let's say I've got 30 bucks in my Nadex account, okay? I've only got 30 bucks sitting in my Nadex account. I want to enter this trade right here. How much money do I need of my 30 bucks to enter this trade? What's my risk? I buy at 24.10. My risk is only down to the floor of 2,400. That's 10 pips, dollar a pip. My risk is 10 bucks. So how much do I have to put in to get it put up to get in this trade? 10 bucks. Okay, makes sense. So that so the amount of money you need in your account to trade a spread is whatever amount of risk you got to put up to get in that spread. Okay. Um, James James says, are the spreads based on the underlying or on the indicative value? It's it's the Nadex indicative. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I'm some of these questions. I I think we've already answered some. I'm. Uh, Trying to just check here. Lori, once a spread expires, what is your next option? Well, you've got a couple options here, Lori. For example, let's say we were trading a spread and it's just, it shoots, we bought it and it shoots up to our ceiling here, right? We've hit max profit, so we close it out. But everything in our strategy or system, charts, indicators, whatever, tells me it's still going. Well, you've reached the ceiling of this spread but there's always other spreads with higher ceilings. You can just pop right into another spread. I'll show you an example here in a second. Okay, you can pop right into another spread. It's not like, oh, I'm capped to my, I'm capped at my ceiling here, so I'm done. No, you can pop into another spread, keep going, okay? 
Uh, let's see here. Myra normally within like a couple of ticks. Okay. Like sometimes less than one, but I mean, it's, it's normally like within a tick or two. Uh, let's see here. John D. What are the advantages of a spread as opposed to a binary? Uh, John, I've actually done some full webinars on that. In fact, I did one not too long ago. If you go to the Nadex um, archives or the Nadex YouTube channel archive, I think the title it, I think the title of the webinar is "Binaries versus Spreads: Which One Is Better?" And I basically, you know, go through and talk about, you know, in general, not one is not better than the other. It's about what is your strategy or system, first of all, and then secondly, it's about reading the market. Okay, and you know, it's a lot to get into, but if you check out that webinar, I kind of go through pros and cons of each. Not not necessarily pros and cons. It's it's about reading the market to know which is, which is best. All right, couple quick a couple quick examples here. Um, let's see, um, John. Let's say that you're a long term trader and you're looking, you know at what is the market going to do over the next however many hours or you know what's the market going to do over whatever you're expecting a big move in the market right so you think the market's going to go up you're expecting a big move in the market you go and you buy a binary for 70 bucks what's the most you can make it on a binary what's the most a binary could be worth at expiration 100 bucks you bought a binary for 70 bucks. Market went up just like you thought. You made 30. But what if the market went up 200 pips? And you could have made a dollar a pip on an 8x spread. I mean, you put up 80 bucks risk for the binary. You could probably get in a good size spread or multiple spreads for $80 risk. Make sense? Um, one other thing to look at. I bought this spread at 24.10. Okay, I think the market's going to go up, but I'm wrong. And at expiration, the market closed at 24.09. The market went down one pip. It closed down one pip below where I bought. How much do I make or lose at expiration on this spread? One dollar, right? Dollar. Let's say I bought a binary with a strike price of 24.10 and I bought it for $70. At expiration on my binary, the indicative closed at 24.09. How much did I lose on my binary? 70 bucks. So what did I tell you? First thing first, binaries and spreads are different. It's not all or nothing, right? Okay. So now, opposite example. What if I bought a binary at 2410 and the market didn't move a whole lot, but it went up to 24.15. I bought the binary for 70 bucks. The market went up five, only five pips. Did I win on my binary or did I make money on my binary? Yeah, I made 30 bucks. How much did I make on the spread when the market went up five pips? I only made $5. So see, See where I'm going with this? That's why I did a whole webinar on it. It's not that one's better than the other. It's about what is the market doing? Is the market going to move a whole lot? And I want to follow a dollar per pip. What is my risk reward ratio? I think the market will stay up or go up, but I'm not expecting to go up a whole lot. So maybe the binary, but th that's, that's really a personal preference and a strategy preference and a what's the market doing? that help, John, and everyone else? Does that make a little more sense now of pros and cons? Or again, I shouldn't say pros and cons. It's about selecting the best instrument for the market condition or for your strategy or system. Okay. 
Uh, let's see here. So real quick, because we're running out of time here, let's move on. All right, expirations, and you can hop on to the Nadex website or to the demo site, and you'll see that there's all kind of different um, there's all, all kind of different spreads available, all kind of different expirations available. You've got interday spreads, little as two hours. You've got daily spreads up to 22 hours and 15 minutes. There's different floors and ceilings. Okay, and basically, you might be a little confused here by what does this mean. Okay, um, let me tell you how it's going to work. Okay, you might have, let's say on a particular product, let's say that you've got a sp spread. Normally on any particular product, you've got multiple spreads available all the time. Okay, and you might have one particular spread that's a 500 pip wide spread. And you've got some others that are 250 pips wide, and you've got some that are like 100 pips wide. So you've got different options, okay? You've got different options there on which spread to choose from, okay? Now, some people are saying, well, why would I ever want to trade one of those big middle spreads where I got to put up so much money? Why wouldn't I just trade that, the little 100-point spreads and get close to the floor and have less risk? Well, again, what if you think the market's going to move a lot and you want that big three or four or 500 pip spread to give you more room? Yeah, you got to put up a little more money to get into it, but it gives you more room, okay? Now, how are these determined, okay? And let me cover this real quickly, okay? Because we are kind of running out of time here. Um, and I'm going to just give you a basic quick example here on a chart. Let's just say, all right, and now I'm showing you the, um, let me see, do I have another one? Let me open a, I wasn't planning on pulling this up, but let me just show you something here real quick. Basically, how are spreads determined, okay? Let's just say, and there, there's not a new spread coming out on the NASDAQ at six o'clock. There's not a little 100 pip spread one, but let's just say there was, okay? So some people think, well, Nadex just randomly makes up these, you know, spreads on, uh, actually, hold on. I'm gonna do something a little different. Give me a second here. Some people think, oh, well, I don't understand, like these floor and ceilings, where do they come from? How does Nadex make those up? Is Nadex biased, like, oh, the market's going up, so they put a floor or ceiling here? Are they biased, like, oh, the market's going down, so they're going to put a floor and ceiling here? Like, I don't understand why are there different floors and ceilings? Why are there different, you know, size of spreads? Well, I think you understand now why there's different sizes, why some are on 100 pips wide, some are 250, some are 500. It gives you options. Where do you want to be? Which one do you want? How much do you want to put up to get into a spread? How far do you think the market's going, right? So it gives you different options there. That's why there's different sizes of spreads, okay? But how are they determined, okay? And I just want to show you that real quick because for, for those of y'all that don't understand that, it can be very confusing. So we were looking at some examples earlier about 100 pip wide spreads, correct? Okay, so right now it's 5.54 Eastern time. At six o'clock Eastern time, I pulled up a Euro dollar chart. At six o'clock Eastern time, a new spread, there's gonna be a bunch of new spreads opening up, but one of the spreads that's gonna open up is a two hour spread from 6 p.m. until 8 p.m. And it's gonna be 100 pips wide. But there's going to be three of them. There's going to be three spreads, all of them 100 pips wide. Why? And what's going to determine the floor or ceiling? Well, at about 558, okay, wherever the market is, okay, it's going to be rounded off, and that's where the floor and ceilings are going to be determined. So let's just say it was like 6 o'clock right now. Here's what would happen. You would have a 100 pip wide spread, 
that had a floor, okay, meaning a floor or a bottom right where the market is currently going up 100 pips, okay? Then you're gonna have another spread that has a ceiling right where the current market is going down 100 pips. Make sense? Nadex just doesn't randomly make up floor and ceilings. It's at six o'clock, wherever the market is, okay, we've gotta come up with a new two hour spread. There's gotta be three of them and they're 100 pips wide. So wherever the market is, we're gonna make one that has a floor where the market is going up. We're gonna have one that has a ceiling where the market is going down. And then we're gonna make a third one right in the middle that goes up 50 and down 50. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's how they're determined. Or let's say that it's a 250 pip wide spread. Well, there's gonna be three of them, same thing. 250 up, 250 down, 250 split down the middle. Okay, so if you ever wonder how spreads get determined, it's when they open up, it's all about where is the market right then. Okay, make sense? Okay, so I hope for you guys that that helped you understand a little bit more here um, about how spreads work and the basics of Nadex spreads, okay? So let me, um, let me just skip through this real quick. We're kind of running out of some time here. Um, again, hop on over. If you want to kind of play with spreads here and get a good handle on them, hop on over to nadex.com and go ahead and get yourself a demo account, all right? Get yourself a demo account right now. You can start playing with spreads tonight. You can start experimenting with them with your particular strategy or system, and you can check them out. Hop on over and check out our website at apexinvesting.com. We've got literally hundreds of hours of free education over there, step-by-step -step training courses on binaries and spreads, different ways to trade them, uh, different strategies and systems. We've got news calendars and scanners, free deviation levels. Uh, Winston, I'm using NinjaTrader. We show you over on our site how to get free NinjaTrader platform, free futures data, Forex data. Um, you just hop on over there and just get a username and password, completely free membership to, to get access to all of that stuff as far as the education and the step-by-step -step courses. So take advantage of that. Take advantage of the free education there. Take advantage of the free demo account offered on Nadex. And uh, you can check out some of our live uh, binary scanners and spread scanners. We show you, um, you know, different ways to scan the Nadex website real easily for all your best options there with binaries or spreads, especially, the, you know, with the spread scanner. It will, it will show your max risk and reward and where you're buying and which ones are available to you. Real easy place there. Okay. All right, guys, we are about out of time here. I really appreciate you um, joining us tonight. I hope this was informative for you, especially for you newbies that were not familiar with spreads. And I hope it was a good kind of review of the basics for you veterans that have been around with us for a while, just reminding yourself the great effective leverage and the power of having those capped risk products with Nadex and remembering that, again, I'm not saying one is better than the other. It's all about reading the market and knowing which one is best for you at the time and what the market condition is doing. And just remember that with Nadex, you've got binaries, you've got spreads, you've got multiple expiration times and sizes of spreads. You've got great access to different products that will give you multiple plays in your playbook. So take advantage of them. So guys, once again, thanks for being with us tonight. And we look forward to uh, seeing you next Monday night and each and every Monday for our Apex, or for our Nadex application and strategy webinar series. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, everyone. Great questions tonight. Great feedback and interaction. Have a good evening. Hit us up over on the Apex site if there's anything we can do for you, any questions we can uh, 
answer for you. Check out the Nadex archives for other videos on strategies and systems for spreads. And we will see you next week. Have a great evening. Thank you very much.